welcome to another episode. I'm your host, Daniel Ibrahim. As one journeys further into the month of Kiyak, one looks no further than the love bestowed upon us through the incarnation of God the Word. As St. Gregory the Theologian states in his liturgy, As a good shepherd, you have sought after that which had gone astray. As a true father, you have travailed with me, I who had fallen. Emulating our first father, the Church has termed its shepherds various plays on the word father, such as Abuna or Ava. What characterizes true fatherhood in the Orthodox Church? Moreover, what role do the early Church Fathers play in the safeguarding of the, of the sound faith? How much credence is given to them? And what do they have to say about the value in receiving the Incarnate Word? As the Church progresses through this joyful season, I wish to remind you of the significance of who is to be received. The next Father, who I wish to introduce to you today on our journey through Kiak, is St. Athanasius the Apostolic, 20th Pope and Patriarch of Alexandria in the 4th century. Before reaching the age of 20, he wrote a book analyzed by many church scholars titled On the Incarnation, which highlights the necessity of the Incarnation and the lasting implication of God coming down to earth. Combating Arianism his entire life, the Church credits him with writing the Nicene Creed, in which only as a deacon at 27 was able to formulate and excommunicate Arius at the First Council of Nicaea. We need look no further, as this creed is recited every day in the prayer of the hours and every service that is prayed by the Church. In a homily titled Against the Arians, he writes, quote, Whereas the flesh is born of Mary, bearer of God, he himself is said to have been born, who furnishes to others an origin of being, in order that he may transfer our origin into himself. And we may no longer, as mere earth, return to earth, but as being knit into the word from heaven, may be carted to heaven by him. For no longer, according to our former origin in Adam, do we die, but henceforward, our origin and all infirmity of flesh being transferred to the word, we rise from the earth, the curse from sin being removed because of him who is in us and who has become a curse for us. End quote. Here St. Athanasius underscores what it means to be united with our creator. Let us ponder for a moment on the length to which God went to not leave us. We oftentimes do not realize the effects on a day-to-day -day basis. Yet let's think for a moment. God created us in the Garden of Eden to live forever. Yet out of his foreknowledge knew the susceptibility of our nature. We chose the way of death, and as a result were sentenced to it. We became mortal, not only with an ability to die, but inescapable of it, with all of its pangs and toils. And even before the fall, we had an origin. But here, St. Athanasius makes the distinction that our origin, capable of death, has been in inserted in him which as a result of his divinity, sprung into everlasting life. Many have the perceived notion that because of our corruption, our home is not in heaven. No, we were first created in paradise, in the image of the incorruptible. And because of the cross, we're restored once again to return to our first home, which was rightfully ours to inherit. Now, what will be the points highlighted by the fathers? God, in his inconceivable wisdom and foreknowledge, knew of the susceptibility of man to fall. Yet in his benevolent love for us, he created us, calling each and every one of us by name to his kingdom and to be restored once again to being united with him in his glory. That is not enough, however. Imagine for but a moment, a priest is coming to sleep at your place for a night. Will you not prepare and refresh his room to be as pleasing as possible? How about a bishop? You would clean the entire house. How about the Pope? Why, the city would be beaming and everything nearby would be prepared to receive one esteemed with such high honor. Therefore, how much more should we prepare to receive Christ, the word of the Father, in our, every heart, in our very hearts, which we not only receive in this season, but every time we partake of the Eucharist? Let us therefore examine ourselves to behold that which we are about to receive and to further understand the magnanimity of God's love for us. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Kiak in the Eyes of the Fathers. Tune in next time to hear about another father. Thank you.